So what is a traditional dwelling? Well, a traditional dilling we think of as being brick walls with a pitched roof on it. Sometimes it has solid brickwork, sometimes it's covered in brickwork. Modern construction, traditional dwelling, is timber framed, an external skin of brickwork and a pitched roof. Your Homes Newcastle has examples of all the main groups of non-trad houses, and these can be broken down into in situ poured concrete, precast concrete, steel frame. We have one or two timber frame, and then I've got some slides of miscellaneous, rational, and, and, and traditional forms of construction, just to help you understand about the different types of houses that we've got. This is the Aero Duo slab. We've got a lot of these down at Walker, 1921. This is right in the early days of cavity wall construction. And what you've got here, and this one in the centre here, is a private, obviously that's the one that hasn't been decorated. These are ours on the either side of it. What you've got is you've got concrete columns every four feet on the area dual slab. So you'll have a column there, you have a column there, column there, column there. And that's all in situ poured concrete when they built the houses up. Clink a clock box on the outside, clink a block on the inside, and a, a, a cavity, four inch cavity in between. And the next picture just shows you there's the in situ poured concrete columns, there's the little timber button that they used for the uh, formwork. They built the walls up gradually and then poured the concrete and glued it all together. I took this photograph because it shows quite clearly that the cavities have been insulated. Those little blips there, there, these, they're all drill holes. And obviously to get the cavity filled, you've got to work within the four foot module of the, of the columns. That's a photograph I took of a fire damaged property where we gutted the hole on the inside. And you can see there, it's had a new concrete floor put in that's the, the, the vapour barrier, the damp-proof membrane for the ground floor. There's the in-situ poured concrete columns. There's the in-situ lintel across there. And then the timber floor for the first floor construction. But that shows you quite clearly that's the in-situ part of it. What is no fines concrete? Well, concrete is made up of the elements of coarse aggregate, which is your gravel, fine aggregate, which is your sand, cement to glue it together, and water all mixed up. With no fines concrete, there's no fines. So you get the coarse aggregate, you get the cement, and you get the water. So what you get in there, because there's no fines to fill the voids, you get this insulation value in the concrete. Now at the time that these houses were built, all that air produced a fairly good insulation value, U value. It's not good by modern standards, but at the time that these houses were built, you were able to build concrete houses solid walls and a timber shutter very, very quick and very, very efficiently. So when we're talking about no fines concrete, that's what it is. It's full of air. And really, if we've got to do any repairs to these houses, it's very, very difficult because the no fines, once you touch it, when you drill it or try and repair it, it drops to bits. It looks like air or chocolate. That, that's what it is. It's, good. it's full of air bubbles. This left-hand picture there is the, the point block at, uh, up at Kenton. Now that one, that, that's not an original no fines concrete surface. It's got insulation on and that's an insulated render. So that's how we've tried our houses. Airy concrete houses. These are the houses that had set the whole thing away as far as the housing defects acts were concerned. That's what they look like now. 74 houses up at Havana Crescent were repaired the defective elements were removed and we used the license repair system from Leeds City Council and that's what it looks like now. These slides just help to understand how they put it. There's the original, there's the way they are now with the brick skin on the outside. And what we did, if you can picture that, we actually built the inner leaf. That's the concrete panels that you see. That's the inner leaf and that's the brickwork all built on a new foundation. Moving on now to the Doran concrete houses. Again, these are story height concrete panels. 
no real structural, serious structural problems with them. I'm aware of the defects on these properties, but one of the problems is it's not easy to have a licensed repair scheme type of uh, repair done on these properties. So none of the properties have been made mortgageable. If anybody wants to buy these properties, you know, they've got to, got to pay cash for them or get a bank loan. That there shows the, 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 setting, the, the way they're put together. In this case, the panels have been rendered on the outside. I did some investigative work up at uh, Leamington and knocked a hole through the panel. And what you see there is there's the render on the outside, there's the concrete panel, and there's the timber part, and where the wing bolts... Oh, there's the wing bolts there. Just shows you the two panels being wing bolt fixed together. It's as simple as that. Then they had polystyrene insulation and plasterboard and then skim. But that there just shows... The panels are only 14 inches wide. That, that's a panel on the inside. Now we'll go to the Tarrant bungalows. These are the ones that I said were built as temporary homes and we've got some at uh, South Gosforth and th th that's the contract that I'm working at the moment. Again, they had the Trafford asbestos cement tiles on the roof. Story height concrete panels. These are concrete panels, just one story height, sat on a, a so timber sole plate, a little bit of a plinth wall around the outside and very quickly put together. They're, they're just 14 inch wide concrete panels with little wing nuts. You just tighten them up. Uh, and then lying on the inside. Very much like a little uh, holiday bungalow. In 1983, they were refurbished, which meant putting on the outside 50 millimetres of re uh, insulated render. That was rock wool insulation. The kind of product that you would put in a cavity now, that was put on the outside of the concrete panels to make the walls warmer and then a render finish. So what you get is a spar dash finish. And in 1987, they took off the asbestos roof covering and put on the Decorah metal roof tiles that you see there. This is to demonstrate that these houses had inherent defects and the Building Research Establishment in their Housing Defects Act have designated these properties. That's the kind of problem that you get on the corner column. You know, that's the corrosion of the reinforcement. That's the concrete panels and there's problems around its sole plate level and, and down at Easington I took this photograph because the, the sole plate has been taken away completely. And the sole plate I'm talking about is that wooden plate there which is sat on the brickwork. And then that's the insulated render. That's a photograph inside just showing the flimsiness of the, the internal partitions and the ceiling. It's very, very flimsy uh, construction. This is a typical unity house. There you get the columns every three feet. And here you see a picture at South West Denton where we've taken away, where well, we're taking away the load bearing elements and transferring the load from the floor beams onto the, <coughs> the cavity brickwork and that's the new cavity brickwork construction. This shows you the, the flats of Church Road. These are unity but a little bit different. Instead of having the concrete panels they've got a brick skin on the outside but you've still got the concrete columns and because the columns are six inches by three and a half at three feet centres, you've got a cavity of six inches. So that has a brick skin but it also has a cavity of six inches. So they've been filled with rock wool. So that's the three story flats. They will not be mortgageable because we've left in the load bearing elements, that is the defective elements. Moving on to BISF. Now the BISF houses, these were built after the Second World War, starting from about 1947, and we've got them in, in various parts of the city. The original uh, construction is a render onto the steel frame, sheeting on the top, and then asbestos roof covering. In recent years, and when I say recent years, the BISF, it must be at least 20 years when we started to do those, we started to replace the asbestos roof covering and also replace the sheeting at the top and the bottom. On the bottom, we put a very stiff board on there, which it's not asbestos, it, it, it's a gravel textured board called Stenai, and we put insulation between the steel frame and the board, and then up above there we put these colour rock tiles. So what, that's a different type of colour rock tile, but it's still a colour rock tile. The Dolongo house. My records show that the first prefabricated houses that Newcastle built uh, were down at St Oswald Avenue at Walker, and these were the Dorman Long Company houses. There's only two of them, and these were steel frame properties with a, a, a pitched roof. From the technical information that I've got, 
originally they probably had a concrete roof on, still due a pits like it is there, but it was actually concrete, and then the tiles put on top of that, or the slates. This house is put together, I'll just, there's the bit of steel frame down on the concrete slab, steel frame came up, on the inner leaf of block work you had there, and then the outer leaf you had a metal lathing with render. This here shows the steel frame carried right up the first floor and then up to the roof. The original external wall was constructed with an inner leaf of breeze concrete block. The, the trusses are every four feet, and that's a steel truss as opposed to a timber truss. So it's a steel house, steel trusses. The unusual feature about the, this, as we see it now, is you've got what they call timber sorting. Now that probably might have been concrete at one stage in the past, but whoever's re-roofed it put these rafters on, spanning in a horizontal direction between the various purlins. At, uh, trusses at every four feet. These are the Dennis Wilde type houses, Mr. Dennis and Mr. Wilde. And this sketch is just to demonstrate um, the, the, the skeleton of the house. They would build the steel frame up before they start and put the rest of the construction together. The only thing that identifies this to a surveyor as being steel framed is if you go inside the front door, you can see a steel beam going from the front of the back to the back of the house where that column is there. But to most people, they would look at it and say, that's just a normal house, there's nothing unusual about that. I've put these photographs in just to show you the level of corrosion that you get around ground level, damp roof course level. That's the kind of corrosion that you get, that's the, that's the structure, that's the, the skeleton, as it were, of the house, and that's the kind of corrosion that you've got. This shows you the reinforcement that I've put on either side, stools, to stiffen it up. And of course what we do nowadays, we clean the steelwork back and put a protective paint on it, and also wrap it with insulation, which is a styrofoam insulation. And these are called the Howard steel framed houses, built in 1946-47. And originally, that's what they looked like. They had asbestos on the roof, um, asbestos panels around the perimeter, and then concrete panels around the base. This was all prefabricated. It was a steel framed. The cost of the urban put a brick skin around the outside and make them very much more attractive. So when the city council took them over, they already had this brick skin. We did discover a wall tie problem, and we had the wall ties, uh, additional wall ties put in at the time that we did some refurbishment work there. Probably the last of the, of the steel framed houses that Newcastle ever built. This is up at Betts Avenue. That's the Tyndale House at Wickham View, a multi-storey block. Stanley Miller built these properties, there's only two terraces, at Betts Avenue, and they're steel framed houses, and they're built on a concrete raft. This was in a mining area, I've got the ground investigation for this, where we did some grouting works on the mine workings that was underneath for Tyndale House, and also for this. And having grouted up the mine workings, they then built the houses on a concrete raft slab, like that. The Norwegian timber framed houses that were got up at Fenham 2 were built down in Walker as a pilot, uh, and, and these are the only two that are down at Hexham Avenue at Walker. Experimental pier built in five days. So they were made in a factory in Norway, shipped onto a boat and brought into the town.